Okay. So this talk is going to be about a, a small issue with the integration of rational functions. That is, when we are doing definite integration, or rather, we are, we are actually sort of thinking about the functions clearly, rather than just giving an expression and leaving it there. So we have this. Uh, we are trying to integrate something like this, where the denominator has distinct linear factors. Okay, and we have this general formula. It's fine which works in the degree of r is less than n and if it's not then we have various reductions you can do long division and also this tells you how to find the integral however this doesn't really capture the issue of, of where the functions define where the antiderivative makes sense etc so let's just look at this okay by the way uh, just for simplicity I'll, I'll assume that none of these x minus alpha i divides rx okay I mean, if it does, then that's kind of something which which is which would cancel, and so you'd have a removable discontinuity, etc. So, so I'm assuming that Rx is actually not uh, divisible by any of these. Okay. If if it were, then then that that term actually wouldn't appear in here. This would be zero, and some things would get. Changed. So basically, this is like in a reduced form. No common factors between numerator and denominator. Okay. In that case. What is the domain of the of this function, the function you're trying to integrate? Or rather, what are the points not in its domain? Hmm? The domain? Yeah, what are what are the what is what is what all is not in the domain? What real numbers are not in the domain of this all one? Alpha, from uh, alpha one, alpha two, two alpha. To right? So the domain is everything else basically. So the domain splits up into intervals. The domain is not connected. It splits up into, into intervals. And they split up into intervals based on the alpha 1 to alpha n. I'm assuming that the alpha 1 to alpha n are all distinct things. OK? And I also assume for simplicity that they are in increasing order. I mean, I can always rearrange them in increasing order. But just for simplicity, I'm assuming that they're already in increasing order. So I had written this earlier in an earlier video for later and now later has come. Okay, so the intervals, there are how many intervals into which the domain is divided? N plus one. N plus one, right? There's N minus one of them which are bounded between the alpha i adjacent alpha i's and there's one minus infinity to the first one and there's one from the last one to infinity. Now, what I'm saying is that on each interval, you can write this thing but you can further simplify it because on each interval you know what the sign of x minus alpha i is for every i okay and so you could uh, based, on whether, based on whether it's positive or negative you could simplify this either as ln of x minus alpha i or ln of alpha i minus x okay so for instance if you are let's say you are on the interval uh, alpha 2 to alpha 3 okay then ln then x minus alpha 1 and x minus alpha 2 are positive so for those you'll use this form okay whereas x minus alpha 3 and all the higher ones are negative so for those you'll use this version okay so within each piece you can you get the same expression but you can simplify it further and the other thing i want to say that that the the pieces don't have any relation between each other in the sense you cannot you cannot do a definite integral from a point in one piece to a point in the other okay so your definite integrals have to be completely within a particular piece and and in some sense the pieces are all all independent of each other okay 